Isn't self-expression really self-direction? How you think, how you move, how you motivate yourself, it is. And ambition is a result of self-direction. One of the six principles for building ambition is positive self-direction. Positive self-direction says, I know who I am, and I know where I want to go. I am accumulating knowledge, experiences, feelings, and philosophy that will help prepare me for opportunities that I know will show up without notice. Positive self-direction means you know who you are and where you want to go. You've already spent a great deal of time thinking about it. You've been working on the parts of your personality that will make you better. Working on your attitude, working on your health, working on your time management skills, putting it all down on paper. And you constantly see yourself in the place that you want to be. As you talk with yourself every day, how often do you ask, is what I am doing today getting me closer to where I want to be tomorrow? Am I making the daily adjustments necessary? Am I doing all that it takes? Will I keep on doing it until direction determines destination? Here's a question you need to ask yourself. Are all of the disciplines that I'm currently engaged in taking me where I want to go? What an important question. At the beginning of the month, at the beginning of the week, at the beginning of the day. Because here's what you don't want to ever do. Kid yourself. You can kid your neighbor, and you can kid the marketplace if you want to. But gosh, you can't kid yourself with your fingers crossed, hoping you'll arrive at a good destination when you're not even headed that way. You say, well, maybe the wind will take me. Well, there's a chance, but you've got to take charge. You've got to ask yourself often, am I doing the disciplines that are taking me in the direction that I want to go? I don't want to be faked out here and think I'm on the way to financial success when there's not a prayer, not a hope. I don't want to be faked out hoping that there's someone else who's going to take care of it, take care of me. They're not going to take care of it. They're not going to take care of me. What if all of your negative relatives turned positive? What'll that do for your fortune and your future? Not much. If prices come down a little, what'll that do for your fortune and your future, your sophistication and your culture? What'll that do? Not much. If the economy gets a little better, what'll that do? Answer. Not much. If you don't make plans of your own, you'll fit into someone else's plans. And guess what they have planned for you? You're right, not much. Most people wake up every morning counting on this not much list. And that's why what they have is not much. Not much hope, not much promise, not much progress. They're driving what they don't want to drive, living where they don't want to live, doing what they don't want to do. Forget the thief waiting in the alley to snatch your purse. What about the thief in your mind? Lazy, not stimulated by thoughts and questions. Don't become a victim of yourself. Ask yourself these questions. Is this the direction I want for my life? Is it someone else's direction? Is it a goal that I have been ingrained with since my childhood? Is it my parents, or my spouses, or my bosses, or my children's? Is it mine? Ask yourself these questions. Debate them if you will. Debate the ideas I am sharing with you on this program. Later, after you've heard all the ideas, debate what will work for you and what won't work for you. But most importantly, get into the debate of your inner mind. What am I doing that works? What am I doing that doesn't work? Debate it all. Work with your mind to figure out the best possible direction for you. Your self-direction. You hear stories all the time of kids. Middle class kids, upper middle class kids, you hear stories all the time about good kids that are having problems. Their parents are highly successful, they want their kids to be highly successful, but the kids are having problems. Maybe not with their grades, but with how they feel about themselves. The parents push their kids into one career direction, probably to take over the family business, or follow in the family footsteps. It's the parents' direction, not the kids' direction. The kids know that something's just not right, and for these kids, something goes wrong. I know this lady that comes from a medical family. Everybody's in medicine. All of the kids grew up and went to school to be in medicine. It's just what you did. You grew up and became a doctor. Now it wasn't a bad upbringing. They had everything they needed. But they also had the extra push to go into medicine. As a matter of fact, my friend says that they were raised with such tunnel vision that she didn't even have the slightest idea how food got into the grocery store, how cars got into the lots, how money got into the banks. She didn't know. The issues were never brought up at the dinner table. She remembers back in the late 70s, 
the first time she went to look for a job to make extra money in college, that the best jobs in the paper, the ones for qualified people, were only advertising a monthly salary of $900. $900. She thought the average person on the street, the average non-qualified person, made at least $3,000 a month. What a difference. What a shock to be so sheltered from real life, to be so far off in what the average person made for a living. It was a real revelation. So she started asking questions. I mean, if she was that far off in her judgment of average earnings, maybe she was way off on other thoughts in life too. Maybe there was more to life than being in medicine. Maybe this wasn't what she wanted to do after all. Maybe she finally found the reason why she hadn't been happy through all of her academic achievements. Sure enough, she figured out that the medical goals were not her own, only those of her parents. And even though she was chastised by her family for not following through with the family goals, she is now much happier following her own path. Direction must be your own, or it can end up being damaging. Damaging to your soul, damaging to your spirit, damaging to your health. Now there are two parts to self-direction. Positive self-direction, part one, self-knowledge. Self-knowledge is knowing who you are and what you want to do with your life. Self-knowledge is knowing how you feel about yourself. Self-knowledge has a lot to do with your philosophy, and your philosophy has a lot to do with shaping your attitude, how you feel about yourself, how you feel about life, how you feel about your direction, how you feel about others around you, your attitude. You've got to know. You've got to gather up enough knowledge and information to know what's right for you. How do you gather up information? Well, you can start with your own experiences. The best way to know if something works for you the right way is to do it the wrong way. Now you can't keep doing it the wrong way. You've got to be smart enough to say, hey, this isn't working, and change it. Start doing it the right way. Then, search for the knowledge and apply what's right for you in your life. Develop your own attitudes and philosophies around your own experiences and the experiences of others. Take all of the information you have gathered and compile it. Consider it. Debate it. Tear it apart. Turn it upside down. Look at it from your own perspective and refine it to sue you. Rearrange it. Throw some of it out. Keep what you think will work for you. And most importantly, make sure that what you end up doing is the product of your own. Conclusion. Make sure that the knowledge you are building is your own self-knowledge. The second component of positive self-direction is self-preparation. Self-preparation involves being ready for the opportunities when they show up in your life. Being ready for the sales call that may make you a fortune. Being ready for the meeting that may positively affect your career. Being ready for it all in expectation that it will come. For those of you who are parents, when you found out that a new member of the family was going to come along in nine months or so, what did you do? You started getting ready. You started reading books on how to best handle a baby, buying everything you needed, and asking for advice. You defined your parenting style, and got ready for a major change in your life. Preparing for your own life is pretty much the same. Defining a goal, planning, knowing that with enough dedication and hard work, you'll meet your goal. It will be tough at first, but the sacrifice is worth it. So, in the meantime, you've got to be ready for it. If you wish to be ruler over many, you've got to be faithful with few. If you wish to have power and influence over many, be the leader of many, and get the return from many, be faithful when there's just a few. Be disciplined, and in your own enlightened self-interest, that gives you the best chance to be the ruler, to have power, influence, or a place of honor among the many. Be faithful when there's just a few. Set up the lines when there's a few. Be totally absorbed when there's just a few. Then, put yourself in line so that when a leadership position opens with many, you'll be called. That's the key. The same thing goes with your money. Positive self-direction says, in your own enlightened self-interest, pay real close attention to just a few dollars. Really know where they come from and where they go. Set up the disciplines when the amounts are small, and you'll be on your way to handling it when the amounts are many. Enlightened self-interest, positive self-direction, self-preparation, be ready for tomorrow by doing all that you can today. Set your goals. Set a goal that will make you stretch for what it will make of you to achieve it. The greatest value in life is not what you get, but what you become. The major question to ask on the job is not what am I getting here, but what am I becoming here? Set the kind of goals that will make something of you to achieve them. So there you have the two components of positive self-direction.
self-knowledge and self-preparation. You need both aspects, figuring out who you are and what you want, and being prepared for the day you reach your goals. Being ready, being worthy, becoming the person you need to be in pursuit of what you want. What good is an opportunity if you're not prepared to take advantage of it? Be prepared. Self-preparation has two benefits. The first benefit is that it moves you toward your goal. The second major benefit is that it refuels your ambition. The things you are doing today are getting you ready for tomorrow. It's exciting. Ambition must be kept alive, must continue to move forward. Otherwise you're just daydreaming. You must keep active, keep moving forward, but your ambition can fuel you, motivate you, and get you where you want to be. This method of self-preparation involves three steps. 1. Carefully consider where the next opportunity for reaching your goal will originate. 2. Make sure you know what you need to do to be prepared for your opportunities. 3. Do all you can to make each opportunity more likely to happen. Taking responsibility for your own life, knowing that what is happening now is the direct result of your past activities, is crucial. Being self-reliant means counting on yourself, trusting yourself, and being responsible to yourself. Gestalt psychologists give an example of being self-reliant. They say that you're responsible for getting caught in the rain. They say that by deciding not to carry an umbrella every day, you have made the decision to endure an occasional drenching. Translation By not being prepared, you make the choice of getting caught in some of life's unpleasant circumstances, be they rain, failures, economic losses, relationship losses, professional losses, or personal losses. By not being prepared, think ahead. It's your choice. Now here's the other side of it. By being prepared, you increase your chances of success. By being prepared, you increase your chances of success, of seizing opportunities when they come your way, of being ready within yourself to take advantage of once-in-a-lifetime situations. Some people tend to blame others for their mistakes, blame others for their failures. Somebody says, it's not my fault the report isn't done, so-and-so didn't do their part. Of course it's your fault, it's your report too. It's your responsibility to see that everyone you delegated work to does their part. Now you can't control what others around you do, but it's in your own best self-interest, your enlightened self-interest, that you stay on top of things, especially if it's going to affect your future. Be responsible for the things that affect you. You can make sure you're more responsible by checking in with those people who are working with you the people who make up your team. You can be more responsible by saying, Hey John, how are you doing with your part? Do you need some help? Can we put somebody else in here to help you finish? Now, if John consistently doesn't handle his part, you've got to replace John. If he isn't doing his share, you've got to find somebody that will, or it will negatively affect you. You can't wake up in the morning that the project is due hoping and wishing that John has done his part. No. You've got to be responsible because it's going to affect your career too. Somebody says, well, then how will my life ever change? Answer, when you change. When you change, when you get better, it'll get better. If you change, it'll all change. Don't put it on someone else. Hope that someone else will change it for you. Take responsibility for yourself. Take personal responsibility. You can't change the circumstances or the seasons or the wind. But you can change your reading habits. You can change whether or not you go for the skills, burn the midnight oil, turn yourself around, multiply your value by 2, 3, 5, 10 that you've got charge of, that you have control of. You don't have control of the constellations, but you've got control over whether or not you go to night school, take adult classes, learn some new skills. You have control over that, and if you don't, that's your fault. You've got to take personal responsibility. You've got to be self-reliant. You, you, you. Nobody else can change your life, alter your ambitions, pave a golden road for you. But you can. It's up to you. Be responsible for yourself. Whenever your preparations lead to success, achieving your goals, you reinforce the disciplines that got you there. Success leads to the reinforcement of the proper disciplines. If what you're doing is working, keep doing it. If what you're doing isn't working, change it. When you are doing all that you can possibly do and are successful at reaching your expectations, keep doing it. Success is a reinforcement. Psychologists call this positive reinforcement. We all know about positive reinforcement. That's how we train our dogs. That's how we teach our kids. 
That's how the trainers at SeaWorld can get a killer whale to do tricks and follow commands and work side by side with humans. By positive reinforcement. When you bring a brand new puppy home and try to teach him not to mess in the house, what do you do? You reward him for going outside or scratching at the door. When you're trying to get your toddler out of the diaper stage, what do you do? You reward her with special presents, make her feel special for learning something new. When you're trying to get your older kids to crack the books and study, what do you do? You reward them when they get good grades. You teach them that the skills they are developing now will have great positive effects on their lives later. But you reward them now. This is positive reinforcement. Learning that there are rewards for doing something good, something worthwhile, something of value. The greater the value, the greater the reward. The better you do, the better you reward. The greater the value, the greater the reward. A bigger paycheck, a better house, financial freedom. It's all a reward system. Now there are two major benefits of positive reinforcement. Number one, positive reinforcement builds good habits. If what you are doing, the habits you've gotten into, are building your ambition and increasing your success, keep doing them. Your success is affirming that these habits are good. Your success tells you that you need to keep doing what you are doing. By reviewing these habits that bring on success, you reinforce them, give them sticking power. Don't waste your time on things that aren't going to matter, but a few simple disciplines can change your whole economic future. Future with your family, future with your business, future with your enterprise, your sales career, your management career. A few simple disciplines, a few simple habits, repeated every day. Now here's the formula for failure. Errors in judgment, repeated every day. All you've got to do is to have a few errors in your judgment and repeat them every day. I'm telling you, they'll spin out of control. In 10 years, you'll end up driving what you don't want to drive, wearing what you don't want to wear, living where you don't want to live, earning what you don't want to earn. A few errors every day, bad habits every day, it's disastrous. Now here's why. It's easy to repeat an error in judgment because failure doesn't fall at the end of the first day. Bad habits don't show their horrible results at the end of the first day, or the first week, or the first month. It's easy to get faked out. If disaster fell on us at the end of the first week, we'd change our philosophy. But it's so subtle. Errors in judgment. Bad habits. They're so subtle they get you a little off course. A little off course. A little off course. You keep drifting off course. And all of a sudden, you're caught. So you've got the choice right now of one of two easies. Easy to do, or easy not to do. I can give you in one sentence how I got rich by the time I was 31. I did not neglect to do the easy things I could do. For six years I did not neglect. That's the key. I found something easy I could do that led to fortune, and I did not neglect to do it. The major reason for not having more of what you want in America, more health, more money, more power, more influence, more everything. The major reason is simple, neglect. Neglect, and if you don't take care of neglect, it becomes an infection, and then it becomes a disease. So. If you're in the habit of not doing all it takes to get ahead, get in the habit of doing all it takes. That's the first benefit of positive reinforcement. Building good habits. Now the second benefit of positive reinforcement is that it creates the energy to fuel additional achievement. It gives you the drive to do more. To not only keep on doing what's right, but to do more of what's right, the disciplines that will help you grow and get ahead. It all the knowledge that what you're doing is paying off creates more energy to keep going. How easy is it to get up in the morning when you know you're not doing all that it takes? It's not very easy at all. You can just lay there, awake, thinking, Oh, what's a few more minutes in bed? It won't matter much anyway. Wrong. It does matter. It will matter. Now how easy is it to get up in the morning when you're pouring it on, doing the best you can, anxious to get going, make progress toward your dreams? It's a whole different story. When you're resting to renew your reserves, it's much different than resting to avoid your day. When you're psyched up and excited for your life, when you're excited for what you've planned to accomplish for the day, it's amazing. You'll wake up before the alarm clock even tries to startle you awake. Your successes fuel your ambition, your successes give you extra energy, your successes pave the way for more successes. It's the snowball effect. With one success you're excited to meet another, and another, and another. And pretty soon, the disciplines that were so difficult in the beginning. The disciplines that got you going are now part of your philosophy. How do you know when you're successful? Do you have to be a millionaire? 
No. All we ask of you is that you earn all you possibly can. If you earn $10,000 a year and that's the best you can do, that's enough. God and everything else will see to it that you're okay. The key is to just do the best you can. If it's $10,000 a year, wonderful. If it's $100,000 a year, wonderful. If it's a million a year, wonderful. It doesn't matter. $10,000 a year or a million a year, it doesn't matter. As long as you've done the best you possibly can. Earn the most you possibly can. Be the most you possibly can. And here's why. The essence of life is growth. The essence of life is growth. To do the best you can, most people just try to get through the day. Never writing anything down. Never keeping track of their progress along the way. Never really knowing if they are doing all they can to reach their goals, to drive their ambition. But gifted people learn to get from the day. They don't let a day end without picking up some valuable experience, some emotional content, some idea that may positively affect their future. To get the most from a day, to learn the most from a day, you need to be able to reflect on the day. And how can you reflect on a day unless you record it in history? How can you possibly reflect on a week unless you can look back and analyze it? How can you learn, learn from past mistakes and bask in past successes unless you write it all down? There's something magical in writing out a problem. It's almost as though when you start writing it out, you start figuring out ways to make it work. Perhaps the magic is that when you write it down, you can now be objective. You can start to see objectively where you fit into the picture. You can start to see if you are being responsible, if you are being self-reliant. You are pondering it. You are trying to figure it all out. The fact that it is now on paper actually creates a space between you and the problem, and in the space that you have created. Now solutions have room to grow. You see, writing about events that occur helps you to understand exactly what is happening. When we describe life to ourselves only in our minds, our imaginations tend to feed back false information about how things are, distorted information. Sometimes our creativity can create scenarios that really don't exist at all if we keep the information just in our mind. But by writing it all down, we now can become more factual, more accurate, more realistic, more logical. And then, as we reread what we have written, we create a new picture in our mind. And once we see things as they are, rather than how we think they are, we can see our way to make them better. You know when you thought you were doing what you were supposed to do and were misinformed? The times you thought you had it all laid out and it just didn't work? The times when you burned the midnight oil day after day, and it didn't seem to help? It didn't seem to change the end result? These are the times that you have to rely on your own self-encouragement. And there are two ways to use self-encouragement. Number one. Take responsibility for the missed opportunity or the misrepresentation. Learn from the fact that even though your client wanted it one way, and you presented it the right way, it didn't work. Be prepared for the letdowns that happen every so often. Know that this lost opportunity just sets you up better for the next one. We realize that you can make the necessary alterations next time. Make the changes that will make the difference. Study your mistakes and learn from them. Don't dwell on the mistakes. Acknowledge them. Learn from them. Encourage yourself that you're smarter than your bank account leads you to believe. The second way to use self-encouragement. Remind yourself that you're bound to get better. Don't get down on yourself. Don't beat yourself up. It's the next opportunity that matters. Not the last one, the next one. Now the last one matters only in that you must learn from your mistakes. But the next one gives you the opportunity to show that you have learned from your mistakes. You can do it better next time. You just have to practice, practice, practice. Keep trying. Keep trying. Until what? Until you've got it down. If you figured out what went wrong last time, then you know how to make it right next time. If you figured out what it was in your presentation that didn't work, don't do that next time. If you figured out that the reason you didn't close the deal this time was because you didn't have all the facts and figures in place, have all the facts and figures in place next time. Don't beat yourself up for messing up. Pat yourself on the back for figuring it out. You need to encourage yourself. You need to pump yourself up. You need to be your own cheerleader. Why? Because you can't wait and hope that someone else will come along and cheer you up, make you feel better, tell you that you'll do better next time. You have to rely on yourself. You have to have faith in yourself and your ability to figure out what works and what doesn't, what's right and what's wrong. You have to have the inner belief that everything you're doing, you're doing for a positive outcome in the future. You have to encourage yourself with future successes. The number one way to use self-encouragement Take responsibility for missed opportunities and study your mistakes. Number two. 
Don't get down on yourself. Encourage yourself with your future. Encourage yourself with your goals, your dreams, your ambition, knowing that you've got a plan, knowing that you're taking the right steps, knowing that you're going to do it. Until when? Until you miss an opportunity, are unprepared for an opportunity, or suffer a setback while realizing your goals. When you miss out, you need to encourage yourself by immediately getting back in line. There's an old cowboy saying, fall off a horse seven times and you're a real cowboy. If you fall off a horse, get right back on. If you fall off track, get right back on. If you fall away from your disciplines, get right back to them. If you fall out of habit, get back into the habit. If you fall off, get back on. If you fall off the horse, the horse of habits, or disciplines or progress, get back on. It may be hard, it may be a bit frightening, but get back on. Keep your ambition alive and active and well. We must all suffer one of two pains, the pain of discipline, or the pain of regret. If you don't spend an ounce of discipline, you'll most likely suffer tons of regret. Discipline weighs ounces. Regret weighs tons. It's much easier to be disciplined and have the money than to try to rationalize why you don't. I'm telling you, better a few disciplines than a lack of dignity. Don't wish for fewer problems. Wish for more skills. Don't wish for fewer challenges. Wish for more wisdom. Don't wish for it to change out there. Develop yourself to the point that you can truly and totally rely on yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, I am thrilled to stand before you today to ignite the flame of possibility within each and every one of you. As we stand on the cusp of a new year, let us embark on a journey together. A journey that beckons us to sculpt and refine ourselves into the architects of our destiny to build a better version of ourselves on the canvas of the forthcoming year. As I often say, the greatest investment you can make is in yourself. Life doesn't just happen to us. We happen to life. We possess the incredible power to shape our thoughts, actions, and habits. The canvas of the new year offers us an opportunity, a fresh page to write a new chapter, to design a life that echoes with purpose, passion, and fulfillment. First and foremost, let's start by embracing the power of personal development. The late Mr. Schaff, my mentor, once said, work harder on yourself than you do on your job. This philosophy remains as relevant today as it was when I first heard those words. Dedicate time to self-improvement, for the more you grow, the more you have to give. Read that book, attend that seminar, listen to those audio tapes. Invest in your mind, and watch your world expand. Next, let's talk about the formidable force of goal setting. Goals are the navigational beacons that guide us toward our desired destinations. The new year presents us with a blank canvas, an opportunity to set audacious goals that stretch us beyond our comfort zone. Remember, the goals you set are the roadmaps to your success. Set them wisely, set them boldly, and then take consistent, relentless action toward their attainment. Moreover, as we embark on this journey of self-improvement and goal attainment, let's not forget the profound impact of our habits. Your habits will ultimately define the person you become. Make it a habit to prioritize your health, physical, mental, and emotional. Nurture your body, feed your mind, and cultivate resilience in your spirit. Success is not just about what you accomplish, but who you become in the process. Furthermore, let's address the essential ingredient in the alchemy of success. Attitude. Your attitude is the beacon that illuminates your path. Embrace a positive attitude, for it is the catalyst that transforms challenges into opportunities and setbacks into stepping stones. The key to unlocking your fullest potential lies within you. Building a better you isn't about mere change in circumstance or fleeting resolutions. It's about a profound transformation from within. It begins with a commitment to personal growth and development. It's about expanding your knowledge, honing your skills, and cultivating the habits and mindset of success. One of the fundamental pillars of this transformation is education. Invest in yourself by continuously learning and growing. Expand your knowledge base, explore new areas, and develop skills that empower you to navigate the ever-changing landscape of the world. Remember, formal education will make you a living, but self-education will make you a fortune. However, knowledge alone isn't enough. It's the application of that knowledge that holds the real power. Take consistent and purposeful action toward your goals. Break them down into manageable steps and take one step at a time. Progress might be incremental, but it's these small, consistent steps that lead to monumental achievements in the pursuit of a better you. 
The company you keep matters. Surround yourself with individuals who uplift and inspire you. Cultivate relationships with mentors, those who have walked the path you aspire to tread. Learn from their experiences, their successes, and even their failures. Remember, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, so choose wisely. Moreover, building a better you encompasses more than just professional or intellectual growth. It involves nurturing your physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Prioritize self-care, exercise regularly, nourish your body with healthy foods, and dedicate time to activities that rejuvenate your spirit. A balanced life is key to sustained success and happiness. Now, let's delve into the nexus between personal development and financial independence. When you commit to improving yourself continuously, you naturally enhance your value in the marketplace. Your increased skills, knowledge, and refined mindset become invaluable assets that attract opportunities and success. Financial independence isn't just about accumulating wealth. It's about having the freedom to live life on your terms. It's about having the resources to pursue your passion, support your loved ones, and contribute positively to the world around you. By building a better you, you position yourself to seize these opportunities and create abundance in all areas of your life. Remember, success is not solely defined by the wealth you amass but by the person you become in the process. It's about the lives you touch, the impact you make, and the legacy you leave behind. Embrace the journey of personal growth, for it is the catalyst that propels you toward financial freedom while enriching the very fabric of your existence. As we embark on this journey into the new year, I urge you to commit wholeheartedly to your personal evolution. Set audacious goals, chart your course, and with unwavering determination, march forward toward the life you desire and deserve. Believe in yourself, for within you lies the power to transform your life and shape a destiny of grandeur. In closing, remember these words. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. If you work hard on your job, you can make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you can make a fortune. May this new year be the canvas upon which you paint the masterpiece of your life. Here's to building a better you and stepping into a future brimming with abundance, fulfillment, and unbridled success. Cheers to your journey, and may it be one of triumph and endless possibilities. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as we stand at the threshold of a brand new year, I want to share some wisdom with you about crafting a fulfilling life. I believe that each of us holds the power to shape our destinies, to carve our paths, and to design the lives we dream of. So let's embark on this journey together, and unveil the secrets to creating a life that truly fulfills us in the coming year. First and foremost, let's talk about goal setting. Setting goals isn't just about scribbling down wishes or dreams on a piece of paper. It's about forging a blueprint for your future. In this new year, take the time to set specific, achievable, and inspiring goals. See them not just as desires, but as commitments to yourself. Goals give direction to your efforts and create a roadmap for success. Remember, the goals you set today will pave the way for the life you'll lead tomorrow. However, merely setting goals isn't enough. Action is the key that turns those dreams into reality. It's not about waiting for the perfect moment. It's about seizing the moment and taking that first step towards your aspirations. In this new year, commit to taking consistent focused action towards your goals. It might not always be easy, but remember, it's the consistent effort compounded over time that yields remarkable results. Moreover, in the pursuit of your goals, Never forget the power of personal development. Invest in yourself, in your knowledge, skills, and mindset. Read books, attend seminars, seek mentors, and expand your horizons. Growth isn't just about what you achieve. It's about who you become in the process. Embrace lifelong learning, for it is the gateway to unlocking your fullest potential. Let's also talk about attitude, the lens through which we view the world. Your attitude determines your altitude in life. In the face of challenges and setbacks, maintain an unwavering positive attitude. Understand that obstacles are merely stepping stones on the path to success. Embrace a mindset of resilience, persistence, and unwavering optimism. Remember, it's not what happens to you, but how you respond that truly matters. Furthermore, the people you surround yourself with play a pivotal role in shaping your life. Surround yourself with individuals who inspire, challenge, and uplift you. Cultivate relationships that fuel your growth and bring out the best in you. As you step into the new year, 
evaluate your inner circle, and ensure that it aligns with the vision you have for your life. Gratitude. A simple yet powerful practice. In the pursuit of our ambitions, we often forget to appreciate the blessings that surround us. Take time each day to acknowledge and express gratitude for the abundance in your life. Gratitude opens the door to more blessings and cultivates a spirit of contentment, irrespective of your current circumstances. In this journey of crafting a fulfilling life, there will be moments of doubt, fear, and uncertainty. But it's in those moments that your true strength is revealed. Embrace those moments as opportunities for growth and transformation. Believe in yourself and your abilities, for you possess within you the power to overcome any challenge. Never lose sight of your purpose. What drives you? What ignites your passion? Identify your purpose and let it be the guiding light in everything you do. When your actions align with your purpose, you'll find a deeper sense of fulfillment and meaning in your life's journey. Let me break this down further. It's vital to understand that the canvas of our lives is waiting for our brushstrokes. We are the artists, the architects, and the creators of our destinies. Crafting a fulfilling life is not merely about setting goals or making resolutions. It's about painting a masterpiece, building a life that not only sustains us financially, but also fulfills us on a deeper, soulful level. Let's start by examining what it truly means to craft a fulfilling life. It begins with self-awareness, understanding who you are, what drives you, and what ignites the fire within your soul. Your passions, values, and aspirations are the cornerstones upon which the edifice of your life will stand. To craft a fulfilling life, you must design a vision for yourself. A vision that excites you. A vision that pulls you out of bed every morning with an unquenchable enthusiasm to pursue your dreams. This vision isn't just about career goals or material success. It encompasses all aspects of your life. Your relationships, personal growth, contribution to society, and yes, your financial well-being. Now let's talk about financial independence and freedom, two pillars that support the structure of a fulfilling life. Financial independence isn't solely about accumulating wealth. It's about having the autonomy to make choices that align with your vision, without being restrained by financial constraints. It's the liberty to pursue your passions, to invest in personal development, and to create opportunities for yourself and your loved ones. Crafting a fulfilling life is intrinsically linked to financial independence. When you design your life around your passions and values, you naturally gravitate towards activities that bring you joy and fulfillment. Interestingly, when you genuinely enjoy what you do, when you pour your heart and soul into your endeavors, success and financial rewards often follow suit. However, achieving financial independence doesn't happen overnight. It requires discipline, perseverance, and a strategic approach to managing your finances. It involves living below your means, saving diligently, and investing wisely. It's about making informed decisions today that will benefit your future self. Moreover, crafting a fulfilling life is not a solitary journey. Surround yourself with like-minded individuals, mentors, and a supportive community that uplifts and inspires you. Learn from those who have walked the path before you, absorb their wisdom, and adapt it to fit your unique journey. Remember, setbacks and failures are an integral part of the process. Embrace them as opportunities for growth and learning. As I often say, don't wish it were easier, wish you were better. Every stumble is a chance to refine your approach, to strengthen your resolve, and to inch closer to the life you envision. In this new year, commit yourself to the art of crafting a fulfilling life. Create a compelling vision, align your actions with your values, and pursue financial independence with a fervor that cannot be extinguished. Understand that true wealth isn't just measured in dollars and cents. It's measured in the richness of experiences, in the depth of relationships, and in the impact you make in this world. So my friends, as you embark on this journey into the new year, remember that the power to craft a fulfilling life and achieve financial independence lies within you. Seize it, nurture it, and watch as your life transforms into a masterpiece that inspires not just you, but everyone around you. Thank you for your time. Here's to a year filled with purpose, abundance, and the relentless pursuit of a life that sets your soul on fire. I'm incredibly excited to share this message with you today. I understand that many of you have significant dreams and goals, but at times it can feel daunting and almost impossible to bring them to fruition. Trust me, I've been in that place as well. However, today, I want to discuss something that has been pivotal to my success and the success of countless others. Discipline. 
In today's message, we'll explore the five keys to turning your dreams into reality through the power of discipline. I acknowledge that discipline may sound intimidating to some. It might evoke images of strict rules and limitations. Nevertheless, I assure you that discipline is not about punishment or restriction. Rather, it's about setting yourself up for success and reaching your true potential. And the best part? You're not alone on this journey. We all encounter challenges with discipline in various aspects of our lives, be it in relationships, careers, health, or personal development. By tuning into this message, you're taking the initial step towards turning things around and manifesting the life you genuinely desire. So, get ready to jot down some notes because in this video, I'll share with you the five keys to discipline that will enable you to unlock your full potential and transform your dreams into reality. Let's dive in. Starting with the fifth key, discipline. I understand what you may be thinking. Discipline sounds mundane. However, let me tell you, discipline serves as the bridge between your dreams and your reality. It's the fundamental ingredient that distinguishes the successful from the average. Without discipline, your dreams will merely remain as such. Mere dreams. So, what exactly is discipline? It's the ability to manage your thoughts, actions and emotions to achieve a specific goal. It's the capacity to stay focused and committed, even in the face of challenges and distractions. Discipline forms the backbone of success. We all harbor dreams and aspirations, yet what sets successful individuals apart is their capability to actualize those dreams into reality. And achieving this, my friends, necessitates discipline. Allow me to share a quote from one of my mentors, Earl Nightingale. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Pay attention to the term, progressive. Success isn't a one-time event, it's an ongoing journey. And discipline is what propels you forward, even when faced with adversity. Discipline isn't a trait that comes naturally to most of us. It's a skill that necessitates development and nurturing. Similar to any other skill, mastering discipline requires time and effort. However, the rewards that accompany discipline are immeasurable. Consider this scenario. Suppose you aspire to shed weight and get in shape. You commence with a strict diet and exercise regimen. Initially it's challenging, but you persevere. Then, a few weeks later, you encounter a hectic workday, leaving you drained. The last thing you desire is to hit the gym. This is where discipline comes into play. It's that inner voice urging you to push through, adhere to your routine, and not surrender. And when you witness the results of your diligence, that sense of achievement is invaluable. Discipline isn't solely about achieving your goals, it's also about character development. It instills in you qualities like patience, perseverance, and self-control. It facilitates your evolution into a better version of yourself. Now let me pose a question. How many of you have set goals for yourselves and fallen short of accomplishing them? I'm confident that most of us have experienced this scenario. And what's the primary reason for such failure? Often it boils down to a lack of discipline. We commence with great zeal, yet as time elapses, we lose sight of our objectives and succumb to distractions. We permit our emotions to overpower us, ultimately giving up. However, here's the crux. Discipline isn't about suppressing your emotions. It's about regulating them. It's about recognizing that emotions are transient, whereas the repercussions of your actions endure. It entails making a conscious choice to prioritize your goals over fleeting emotions. Now. I'd like to introduce three key principles that will aid you in cultivating discipline in your life. Firstly, establish a clear vision. Before you embark on achieving anything, you must ascertain what you desire. You need to delineate a clear, specific goal and remind yourself of it daily. This fosters focus and motivation. Secondly, devise a plan and adhere to it. Discipline hinges on consistency. You must devise a comprehensive plan and diligently adhere to it. This encompasses setting specific deadlines, breaking down your goal into manageable tasks, and monitoring your progress. Not only does this keep you on track, but it also imbues you with a sense of accomplishment upon task completion. Lastly, surround yourself with the right individuals. It's said that you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Hence, choose your circle wisely. Surround yourself with like-minded, disciplined individuals who inspire and hold you accountable. Moving on to the fourth key, Accountability. Accountability transcends merely assuming responsibility for your actions. 
It encompasses being answerable for your thoughts, decisions, and choices. It denotes a steadfast commitment to your goals and a willingness to undertake requisite actions to realize them. I've witnessed numerous individuals brimming with aspirations and potential, yet they seem to fall short of reaching their zenith. And the reason? Often, it's a lack of accountability. They harbor dreams but balk at taking ownership of them. They evade being answerable for their actions and decisions, resulting in their dreams languishing as mere aspirations. However, if you harbor aspirations of transforming your dreams into reality, accountability is paramount. You must assume ownership of your goals and evince the determination to do whatever it takes to attain them. You must be answerable for your actions and decisions and most importantly, be willing to hold yourself accountable. Accountability commences with introspection. It isn't about assigning blame or conjuring excuses. Rather, it entails assuming responsibility for your life and choices. It entails recognizing that you wield control over your destiny and your success hinges on your actions. So how do you cultivate greater accountability? Firstly, establish clear, specific goals. Accountability necessitates direction. Hence, without a clear trajectory, holding yourself accountable becomes arduous. Your goals must be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. This imbues you with a sense of purpose and direction, facilitating accountability. Secondly, formulate a plan. Your goals remain unattainable sans a concrete plan. Your plan should delineate the requisite steps to achieve your goals, encompassing a timeline and a mechanism to monitor your progress. This ensures you remain on course and hold yourself accountable for your actions. Thirdly, acquire an accountability partner. Having someone who holds you accountable and keeps you on track is invaluable. Your accountability partner could be a friend, family member, or mentor, someone you trust and respect, who won't countenance excuses. Fourthly, monitor your progress. While having a plan is indispensable, tracking your progress is equally crucial. It offers insights into your journey's evolution, enabling you to make requisite adjustments to stay on course. Additionally, it imbues you with a sense of accomplishment, fostering motivation. Lastly, take action. Despite possessing specific goals, a comprehensive plan, and a reliable accountability partner, success remains elusive sans action. You must evince consistency and unwavering commitment toward your goals. After all, action serves as the conduit between your dreams and reality. I understand that being accountable isn't always facile. It demands courage and determination to hold yourself accountable. However, the rewards far outweigh the challenges. When you assume accountability, you seize control of your life, charting your destiny's course. You become the architect of your future, empowered to sculpt the life you desire. Moreover, being accountable entails embracing failure and gleaning insights from it. Failure isn't antithetical to success, it's an integral facet thereof. It furnishes invaluable lessons, propelling you closer to your goals. Every successful person has experienced failure at some point in their life, but they didn't allow it to hinder them. Instead, they held themselves accountable, learned from their mistakes, and kept moving forward. Now, on to the third key to turning your dreams into reality. Consistency. We all have dreams, whether big or small, that we aspire to achieve in our lives. Whether it's starting a successful business, traveling the world, or simply living a happy and fulfilling life, we all have something we aspire to. However, the sad truth is that many of us never see these dreams come to fruition. We get caught up in the daily grind, the demands of our jobs, and the distractions of modern life, losing sight of our dreams and settling for a mediocre existence. But I'm here to tell you that it doesn't have to be this way. You have the power to turn your dreams into reality, and the key to unlocking that power is consistency. Consistency is the secret ingredient that separates dreamers from achievers. It's the fuel that keeps the fire burning and propels you towards your goals. So, let me ask you. Are you ready to harness the power of consistency and turn your dreams into reality? Consistency is the act of doing something repeatedly, consistently, and with purpose. It's not about doing something once and expecting immediate results. It's about showing up every day, putting in the work, and trusting the process. Consistency isn't always easy, but it's necessary if you want to achieve anything worthwhile in life. For example, in my own journey of personal development, 
I struggled with inconsistency initially. I would get inspired, take action, but then revert to old habits. However, when I made a commitment to consistency by reading every day, listening to motivational tapes, and attending seminars regularly, my life truly changed. I started seeing real progress, and my dreams started to become a reality. Consistency isn't just about taking action, it's also about staying committed to your goals, especially when faced with challenges. It's easy to be consistent when everything is going well, but true consistency is demonstrated during tough times. That's when you must stay true to your goals and keep moving forward. Moreover, consistency involves creating good habits. By consistently performing the same actions day in and day out, these habits become ingrained in you, shaping your life and making your dreams a reality. While some may find consistency challenging, it's ultimately a choice, one that requires discipline, determination, and a strong mindset. However, the rewards of consistency far outweigh the challenges. Consistency also thrives with a clear vision and purpose. You must know what you want and why you want it. With a clear vision and purpose, consistency becomes more manageable because you understand what you're working toward. Therefore, commit to consistency by showing up every day, regardless of the circumstances, and taking small, consistent actions towards your dreams. I promise you that if you stay consistent, you will see progress, and your dreams will become a reality. Now, on to the second key. Commitment. Commitment is the unwavering determination to see something through to the end, no matter the challenges or obstacles that may come your way. It's what keeps you going when the going gets tough and turns your dreams into reality. In life, we all have dreams and aspirations. However, dreams remain mere fantasies until you commit to making them a reality. Commitment involves sacrificing short-term pleasures for long-term success. A story illustrates this. Many years ago, I met a young man who had a dream of becoming a successful businessman. He had a vision of building a company that would impact thousands of lives and leave a lasting legacy. But he had no money, no connections, and no experience. It seemed like an impossible dream. But this young man was committed. He was willing to do whatever it takes to turn his dream into reality. He worked odd jobs to save up money, networked with successful businessmen to learn from them, and read every book he could get his hands on about entrepreneurship. He faced countless failures and setbacks. But he never gave up. And today, that young man is a successful businessman, running a multi-million dollar company that has changed the lives of many. That, my friends, is the power of commitment. Now I understand that some of you may be thinking, but I have commitments. I have a job, a family, bills to pay. How can I commit to my dreams when I have so many other responsibilities? Well, let me tell you this. Commitment is not about finding the time. It's about making the time. It's about prioritizing your dreams and making them a non-negotiable part of your life. It's about sacrificing short-term pleasures for long-term success. Commitment is not a one-time decision. It's a daily choice. Every day, you have to choose to stay committed to your dreams, even when it's hard, even when it's inconvenient, even when it seems impossible. And let me tell you, it will be hard, it will be inconvenient, it will seem impossible at times. But that's when your commitment will be tested, and that's when it will matter the most. So, how do you cultivate commitment in your life? First and foremost, you have to be crystal clear about your dreams and goals. You have to know exactly what you want and why you want it. This clarity will give you the motivation and determination to stay committed. Next, you have to create a plan. You can't just say, I'm committed to my dreams, and expect things to magically fall into place. You have to have a plan of action, a roadmap to guide you towards your goals. And then, you have to take consistent action towards your dreams every single day. But here's the thing. Commitment is not just about taking action. It's also about staying resilient in the face of adversity. Because let me tell you, there will be obstacles, there will be failures, there will be moments when you feel like giving up. But that's when your commitment will be put to the test, and that's when it will matter the most. And that's where personal development comes in. Personal development is the continuous process of improving yourself both personally and professionally. It's about building your mental and emotional strength so that you can overcome any challenge that comes your way. Now, on to the number one key to turning your dreams into reality. Clarity. Clarity is the foundation of success. Without it, your dreams will remain just that. Dreams. But with clarity, 
you can turn those dreams into reality. So, what exactly do I mean by clarity? Clarity is having a clear and specific vision of what you want to achieve. It's knowing exactly what you want and why you want it. It's having a detailed plan of action to get there. It's having a crystal clear understanding of your strengths, weaknesses, and the resources you have at your disposal. You see, most people have a general idea of what they want in life. They say things like, I want to be successful, or I want to be happy. But what does success or happiness mean to you? What does it look like? How will you know when you have achieved it? These are the questions that require clarity. Without clarity, you will be like a ship without a rudder, drifting aimlessly in the sea. You may have all the drive and determination in the world, but without a clear direction, you will never reach your destination. You will be easily swayed by distractions and obstacles, and you will find yourself constantly changing course, never making any real progress towards your dreams. But when you have clarity, you have a map that guides you towards your goals. You know where you are going, and you can make the necessary adjustments along the way. Clarity gives you focus and purpose. It gives you the motivation to keep going even when things get tough. It is the fuel that keeps the fire of your dreams burning bright. So, how do you gain clarity? The first step is to get crystal clear on what you want. Take some time to really think about your dreams and goals. Write them down and be as specific as possible. Don't be afraid to dream big. Remember, the bigger the dream, the more fulfilling the journey will be. Next, ask yourself why you want to achieve these dreams. What is the driving force behind your goals? Is it to provide a better life for your family? Is it to make a difference in the world? Whatever your why may be, it is essential to have a strong and meaningful reason behind your dreams. This will give you the motivation and determination to keep going when things get tough. Once you have a clear vision and a strong why, it's time to create a plan of action. This is where most people fall short. They have a dream, but they have no idea how to make it a reality. But with a clear plan, you can break down your big goals into smaller, more manageable steps. This will not only make your goals seem more attainable, but it will also give you a roadmap to follow. Now I must warn you, having clarity does not mean that the road to success will be easy. There will be challenges and setbacks along the way. But with clarity, you will have the courage and determination to overcome these obstacles. You will be able to stay focused on your end goal and not get discouraged by the bumps in the road. Another crucial aspect of clarity is understanding your strengths and weaknesses. This self-awareness is vital in achieving your dreams. When you know your strengths, you can use them to your advantage. And when you know your weaknesses, you can work on improving them or finding ways to work around them. This understanding will also help you make better decisions and surround yourself with the right people who can support and complement your strengths. Lastly, it is essential to have clarity about the resources you have at your disposal. These resources can be anything from your skills and knowledge to your network and financial means. Knowing what you have and what you need will help you make the most out of what you have and seek out the resources you need to achieve your dreams. In closing, my friends, I want to leave you with this thought. Clarity is the key to turning your dreams into reality. It is the foundation of success. With clarity, you can create a clear vision, a strong why, a detailed plan of action, and the self-awareness and resources you need to achieve your dreams. So, I urge you to take the time to gain clarity in your life. It may be the most crucial step you take towards achieving your dreams. Thank you.